Hello, this is another installment of what I like to call Your County Professionals. I'm Mike Mulkier, 3rd District Commissioner, and I want to thank you for joining me in this edition of District Dialogue on DCTV 23. And by the way, I hope you have a great 2018. Without hesitation, I would say that our county's road system, managed by our Department of Transportation, has more visibility and impact on all of our daily lives more than any other department. The need for improved intersections and continual maintenance, our road system consumes a large portion of our general fund. That's why the original name for the county commission was Commission for Roads and Taxes. Even in the horse-drawn days, people understood the need for a good road system. Managing the many assets of our transportation department requires an extraordinary degree of knowledge and years of experience. And that's why I would like you to meet our fairly new director of Douglas County's Department of Transportation, Miguel Valentin. Well, Miguel, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Boy, have I got a list of questions. <laughs> I've got answers. Uh, great. Um, tell us about your What's your background? What does it take uh, ex uh, education-wise and experience-wise to be a director of transportation? Well, um, depending on the composition of the department, uh, you have to have certainly a technical background. Public works and engineering would be preferred. Okay. Well, I happen to have done both of those elements. Mm -hmm. Public works is more the maintenance component of the infrastructure and then engineering is more the technical know-how in terms of uh, the projects, the alignment of the roads, the mm -hmm. needs, the infrastructure itself. What, what is the typical engineering background? Is it civil engineering? Civil I, engineering, yes uh, sir. And I guess it could be some other things if you've applied, uh, applied yourself to learning in the field. Uh, but generally civil engineering is the, uh, the background okay. for this type of uh, okay. position. All right. And you've been, in, uh, you've been in this trade for a while. I have. <laughs> How long? Uh, probably well over 35 years now. Okay, all right. Um, and uh, you had uh, you had worked for a department prior to Douglas County. Where was that and how long were you there? I, I worked for Rockdale County before coming to uh, Douglas County. But before that, I've been a city engineer, a county engineer, uh, director of engineering, uh, essentially working in the public sector since I've been in Georgia over the last 20 years, 20 some years. Pri I started out in the private sector and did design work for a consulting firm uh, initially. And then I branched into the public sector and I've been, uh, I've gone back and forth, and, mm -hmm. but over the last uh, 20 some years I've been in the public sector. I guess, uh since you worked at Rockdale in a, was kind of a similar or a same position? It was the same position, Director okay. of Transportation. A and in fact, the department composition is very, very similar okay. in terms of the functions and size. And uh, it was a little smaller in Rockdale, but uh, okay. very similar. Function. And you knew our past director, Randy Hulsey. I did. Yeah. Good man. Good yeah. man. Uh, yeah, very good. Uh, uh, certainly. So uh, there were a lot more similarities than, than dissimilarities is what, Absolutely. I, is what I understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, coming into a department is always, it always presents opportunities to either uh, partially maybe replicate what you had created in a, in a past department or uh, if things are doing well, just to make some adjustments uh, to your department's uh, structure and strategy, focus, what, you know, whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. What are some of your thoughts about Douglas County's department? I know they're a bunch of good people. But. There's no question about it. Uh, there are a lot of good uh, functions within the transportation department, uh, uh, divisions that are fully staffed and uh, staffed well. But we do have some areas that we could uh, use uh, perhaps a different skill set in some areas and perhaps additional personnel in, in other areas as well. In terms of the makeup of the department, uh, I think it's fairly well structured. Uh, we, we could use just a little more staffing. Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, that's going to be up to the commissioners, isn't it? It, it certainly and, is. And, and the taxpayers. It is. Uh, I know that uh, 
Uh, I mentioned in my kind of my opening remarks that uh, uh, the county does a lot of things, and, and frankly, a lot of things that uh, either don't touch a lot of citizens or, or they don't know, you know, that it touches them. Like, for example, I can say, you know, the judicial system, most people don't have interaction with that unless they get a mm -hmm. ticket, uh, but it also uh, protects people, but it's kind of behind the scenes. People are very yes. aware of, of the condition of their roads and when a sign is knocked down or, or they run through a pothole. It's a very, very visible department. And so that means, uh, obviously, it's going to be incumbent on you to kind of set priorities to, to meet the, our constituents, meet our taxpayers' needs in the county. What, mm -hmm. are some, what are some things that you would like to see happen in the county as, for, as far as transportation goes? Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that, that uh, often it doesn't come to the forefront, uh, whether it be the c citizens or the commission itself, is the fact that, that transportation is so closely tied to the potential for development. And the, the need for investment in transportation, uh, it pays dividends when you do that. So uh, my goal would be to, to highlight uh, the need to plan and program uh, the transportation investment so that we can take advantage of the potential development. Uh, I, I know that uh, you have already done some work and oh, let me mention now. When did you come on with Douglas County? Let me, let's rewind just a little bit. It hadn't been long. Um, I got here at the middle of August of last year. Okay. So about six months. Old, okay. Six so months. Uh, uh, time flies. Um, uh, okay. Going back to the economic uh, development part, I know that you have interfaced uh, obviously with the uh, county leadership and, and specifically economic development our economic development director and that what I'm particularly thinking about is the Thornton Road uh, corridor. Mm -hmm. What are some economic development uh, opportunities in terms of transportation in that area? Well, one of the things uh, of more immediate importance is dealing with the congestion in, in, along that corridor. Uh, there are areas to the south uh, uh, along Thornton Road where industrial activity has been going on for several years and there's a lot more interest now in, in uh, doing industri industrial development in that area. However, unless we plan for improvements along that corridor, that potential is going to come to a plateau and is not going to fulfill the entire potential uh, for development because it's going to be very difficult for traffic to get through that corridor. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I'm aware of that the Department of Transportation in conjunction with uh, the, the Cobb County DOT and the Douglas County DOT. So you've worked with other counties, obviously. Uh, I've had this, well, yeah. since I've, uh, certainly since I've been here, um, I, I uh, have interacted with all of the neighboring counties okay. to make sure that we coordinate our efforts. And in discussions uh, with them and the George DOT, uh, they are proposing having truck-friendly lanes along Thornton Road. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how friendly truck-friendly <laughs> lanes are. Can be, how, or how friendly they can be. Uh, exactly, <laughs> because, because essentially uh, the proposal will be to widen the road, uh, uh, several lanes, and have a corridor for trucks in the middle. Mm -hmm and some separation between the trucking lanes and the general purpose lanes. So uh, there's going to be a need for additional right-of-way and, and uh, uh, there's going to be impact to businesses along that corridor. But unless you do uh, these types of plans, unless you begin now to see where the corridor is going to be in five, ten years and, and plan improvements to address those needs, uh, it's going to come to the point where you cannot develop anymore uh, without totally destroying the uh, mobility along that corridor. Well, um, you know, I, uh, this, this is a perennial challenge for any government, whether it be a, you know, federal or state or, or, or county, and uh, I would say Douglas County is not the worst and it's, and it's not the best. Uh, 
uh, we're somewhere in the, in the middle of the pack of, I think, anticipating the growth, anticipating uh, the economic developments, which helps drive the overall economy and, mm -hmm. you know, and people's incomes and, sure. and uh, reducing the property values by having more of the burden carried by businesses rather than homes. And, uh, but I think we're, I, we know that. And, and I think in the interviews with you, that was one of the things that uh, impressed folks was the fact that you were pretty forward looking in realizing that we have some clear opportunities in, in Douglas County. Absolutely. And, uh, and no one, I'm pretty sure you can count on the commissioners for, uh, for whatever you need. Uh, Depend up to a point, <laughs> you know. I, I'm sure there's. We, we, yeah, we've got a lot of irons in the fire, you know. Uh, I'm sure there's a limit, but but again, uh, my goal is to, to be able to explain uh, that the correlation between the the opportunity long term that's out there, and really the need to make some perhaps at times difficult decisions in, in terms of how you prioritize uh, the 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 tax rateables, at, you know, within the county. You have to certainly um, prioritize and there's some immediate needs uh, but my goal would be to to highlight the fact that there is a an investment opportunity uh, that uh, unless you make those hard decisions early mm -hmm. on uh, you may just miss the opportunity long term and I think it behooves the the Commission uh, first of all to make those decisions and then determine how we're going to approach it now uh, my thought has always been I, I uh, created, uh, helped create the uh, transportation uh, capital fund. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is a way to incrementally prepare uh, for the future, mm -hmm. uh, be it paying for, you know, engineering studies or land acquisition or whatever, or an opportunity to exploit a possible grant where we could get, you know, federal and, and state money, mm -hmm. but already having money set aside to do that. So it behooves us and you, I think, to, to look at the future and to continue to fund re and replenish and fund and replenish that uh, capital transportation fund incrementally. You know, it's not like we got to put, you know, two million dollars in it this year, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe we can put two hundred thousand dollars in it or, or five hundred thousand dollars and continue to do that over the year. So that was that would be something I would want your support uh, in doing. Absolutely. There, there's no question that uh, uh, there are going to be opportunities, whether it be through federal funding or it could be perhaps a state uh, a funded program that may uh, come up where if you have the local match, you might be able to leverage that. Mm -hmm. and, and if it's federal funding is usually 80, 20, 80, mm -hmm. 80 percent federal and 20 percent local. At the state level, it can vary. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be as high as 50, 50. Um, mm -hmm. But if you are in position to uh, put that funding uh, match in place, uh, then uh, you have the opportunity to, to get that return. Mm -hmm. uh, essentially, if it's a 50-50 uh, match, it's a 100% of whatever you put in, you, you also get in additional funding. So uh, I would definitely encourage uh, there uh, to be that, that mindset of if we have the ability to set money aside as an investment, mm -hmm. as a as a um, very much so. as a fund, mm -hmm. where uh, if an opportunity comes up, doesn't mean you need to spend it or program it. You can just leave it so that when the right opportunity comes along, mm -hmm. you're able to uh, take advantage of it. You know, and, and speaking of grants, uh, I'll state the obvious: uh, if you're not prepared to front some matching money you can forget about getting a grant. That's absolutely right. So uh, it, uh, aside from the, uh, the fiscal aspects of being prepared uh, to put money in, in, in the pot, I think it also shows who's ever granting the grant, if you will, if, mm -hmm. if it's a state or, or the federal government, uh, that you're prepared, you're, for, you're forward looking in your, in your planning and you're thinking about the future mm -hmm. uh, and not just things of immediate, immediate need. Thinking of the future, another one of my uh, uh, I won't say it's a project because it hasn't developed to that extent, but obviously uh, identify a need of more east-west connectivity in Douglas County. 
And I know you. I know you, you've been here long enough to know what our corridors are. You know, they're mm -hmm. Highway Five and Fairburn Road and Chapel Hill Road and mm -hmm. and and uh, and so forth. They all have a, a north-south orientation, which means a lot of people say in the south of the county that want to go into the interstate have to go into Douglasville. Right. And we need a means to bypass if it, if you want to call it a, a south loop or whatever. Uh, a means to completely bypass having to go into, into Douglasville to get on the interstate for people that are commuting to work mm -hmm. or for, for commercial shipments and that sort of thing. So what, what, are you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I fully agree. I, I think having the ability to uh, have a, an alternate to I-20 mm -hmm. uh, is definitely uh, something that you should pursue. Even if for no other reason that if there's a major incident on I-20, Mm -hmm. People have no nowhere to go but through neighborhood streets, and obviously not uh, not not a very efficient way to mm -hmm. to get around. So mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely encourage that. And, I, and we are up, up to a point, I think, uh, beginning to develop some of those uh, alternative corridors. For example, uh, the Lee Road extension that mm -hmm. uh, provides connectivity. Right. Uh, to, to Highway 90, 92, that mm -hmm. certainly would uh, would facil facilitate some of that. Of course, being able to, to project that all the way to Chapel Hill would be the mm -hmm. ultimate goal. Uh, but it is that type of uh, alternate uh, route. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you do that, uh, not only do you have an alternate in case of an incident, but you're going to be able to provide that alternative to folks in that area. Uh, of totally avoiding I-20 and, and getting to where their, their destination through mm -hmm. other routes. And, mm -hmm. and that way you, you essentially are creating a parallel uh, corridor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so uh, from a transportation standpoint, uh, you're, you're adding capacity. Uh, by adding capacity on a parallel route, you are uh, uh, projecting the, the, the capability of the main corridor uh, into the future because uh, it will not come to uh, or need the entire capacity. It will mm -hmm. not reach its entire capacity uh, as quickly if you mm -hmm. provide some relief on, on yeah. other roads. Uh, and you, you mentioned the word relief. I mean, that, that's one of the, to me one of the first most obvious things that would happen. Uh, it would reduce the traffic up, say, up Chapel Hill Road, for example, if people getting on I-20 at mm -hmm. the Chapel, Chapel Hill Road going mm -hmm. either, either east or west. Right. Uh, and uh, funnel them to the east of, uh, of, of uh, Douglasville mm -hmm. and, and keep them out of that, that uh, city core right. right there. So I, th I think that's a huge thing. And then, you know, if you're, you're talking about a, a bypass situation, a bypass road or a southern loop or, or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, uh, that opens up an area for uh, non-residential development. Certainly. Because uh, I cer certainly don't see homes on a four lane, but you certainly can see doctors' offices uh, and businesses uh, on on a four lane connector like that. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about roads. How, how many miles of roads does Douglas County have? The county has uh, 717 miles of roads, uh, paved roads, mm -hmm. and uh, that's um, that is that's a lot of miles. And We're a small county. Well, for a small county, uh, we have a lot of road miles. Uh, that, <laughs> there's no question about that. And, and frankly, one of the challenges when you have that many road miles is to, to maintain uh, at an acceptable le level um, all, all of those roads. And that is a challenge that is faced not just by Douglas County, that, that is a region-wide, statewide, nationwide infrastructure is not uh, up to the uh, 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 level that, of maintenance that, that we mm -hmm. really need. And, and so even though, whether it be through SPLOST uh, funding or general fund uh, or the capital transportation fund, uh, the county is uh, applying uh, some funding to that effort. Uh, it has to be prioritized really well because there, if, if we are maintaining the same level of funding as we have in the last several years, we probably can get to between 25 and 30 miles of road resurfacing in the county mm -hmm. per year. When you 
look at 717 miles. Divide that by. Divide that. It's going to take you a long time to be able to do all of that work. So certainly, uh, relatively speaking, uh, there, in order for for maintenance to occur on a more routine basis, you you would need to make a much more substantial investment. Uh, but that is a challenge because um, it, to that point, what we're talking about is. Bottom line, we're, we're talking about paving more miles sooner, mm -hmm. because when you when you don't, when it comes time to pave, uh, then you have I think probably additional problems and additional costs because they they've been let go so long. There is it's like keeping up a car. Absolutely, very much so. That's a very good analogy. Uh, one of the uh, one of the uh, analyses that I have seen as it re relates to pavement maintenance is. If you're able to provide some remedial type maintenance on a, on a, say, a brand new road after, say, 10 years or so, if you can do remedial maintenance, uh, it'll cost you $2 to do that versus if you let it go for another 10 years, it'll cost you $16 wow. to do that. It's that kind of ratio. Mm -hmm. So it's that factor of, of eight. Uh, so the more remedial maintenance that you can program, the more you can uh, project the life of, of, of the roads. And it doesn't necessarily have to be major resurfacing all the time. If you can provide some treatment that, uh, one analogy that, that I like to use because most people can relate to this is like a roof. If your roof is leaking, if you have the, the funds to do a new roof, then you might want to do that. But if you don't, then you might want to get somebody to patch it just so it doesn't continue to leak. Mm -hmm. Not only because it's an annoyance, but because of the damage that it will cause to the structure mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the house or the building. Similarly to a road. As the road begins to crack and develop potholes, there's more water that gets into into the substructure, mm -hmm. and it deteriorates a lot more rapidly. Mm -hmm. uh, so investing in the maintenance component and having a program to, to do that systematically uh, goes a long ways to perhaps deferring major maintenance because you can, you can do remedial work and get another three, five years and then do some more remedial work before eventually you will have to do some more substantive repair. Mm -hmm. You uh, used a word a few minutes ago uh, about priority. Yes. And uh, I get questions uh, occasionally or fairly occasionally uh, from uh, citizens, you know, why wouldn't my road pave because this road over here was paved. There's a lot of factors that go into that equation. Absolutely. And it could be loading, uh, could be the number, we're going to pave the road because it's got 290 people on it and this road has got 17 people on it. Correct. Uh, but the loading uh, more directly uh, and traffic, what are, what are some of the things that, that factor in how you how you prioritize? Aren't it, isn't every road in the county have a grade? In, in, in yes, the, every, every road has a, a rating that was done through visual inspection and analysis some years back. And we do use those ratings initially to develop a, a list of potential candidate roads. Kind of your baseline, isn't it? The baseline. But mm -hmm. then we do a more detailed analysis. We actually go out and, and measure and determine uh, a lot more closely the level of effort that is going to take to, to put that road uh, uh, into a contract. Uh, there's a, a lot of factors, as you mentioned, certainly the level of traffic, whether it be residential truck traffic, has a tremendous impact. In fact, a difference, uh, as I remember, a, an analysis that was done by uh, a federal agency, uh, one trash truck, a loaded trash truck, causes the equivalent damage on the pavement as 49,000 cars. Wow. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, uh, we've got to pick up the trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly, you certainly have to do that. But, but just that, that'll give you a sense of relativity yeah, that, yeah. that uh, uh, 
uh, vehicles, uh, regular passenger cars, certainly wear the pavement and over time you have to do some maintenance, but it's primarily the heavier vehicles that have the most impact. Uh, so, but, but nonetheless, those are some of the factors that go into that selection. Now, there are instances where we may uh, have selected through that rating process, say two or three roads within a subdivision. And it just so happens that they are situated in such a way that it doesn't make sense for us to have a contractor go in and do those three roads, let's say, and leave a smaller road uh, towards the back. That has a better rating. That has a better rating. Yeah. But just from a logistical standpoint, mm -hmm. we may put that road into the program as well. And so that generates just what you mentioned uh, a minute ago that, uh, you know, why did you do that road when mine is in much worse shape? Mm -hmm. And it's factors like that. But we do certainly try to take into account the condition of the road when we select them. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of a similar situation, someone uh, painting their house and uh, uh, two rooms are open to one another and you paint one room and you, and you don't paint the other. You got the paint cans out and the drop cloths and the brushes and everything. Mm -hmm. Why don't you paint both rooms? You know, Correct. In terms of cost, it's minimal. And, and another another uh, factor of relativity too that we run into very often is, uh, let's say we go into subdivision that has seven roads, se cul-de-sacs and the like, a main corridor going in. We select the four worst roads and we do those. Well, the residents of the three other roads that we didn't do, that were in much better shape now are in the same predicament. They're, they're, they're looking at the roads and saying, hey, you need to do our roads now because those other roads are in much better shape. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. yeah it's, it's an ongoing uh, problem, uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the SPLOST program, which uh, gratefully the citizens of Douglas County supported, and the majority of that money is going to transportation projects. Uh, it kind of, to your point of getting to uh, maintenance projects earlier, quicker, sooner on, on a smaller, on, on a, sh a shorter cycle, mm -hmm. I should say, uh, we contract a lot of work and then, and then we do uh, a good bit of work I within the department. Correct. Uh, given the staffing and, and uh, available equipment and so mm -hmm. forth. Uh, that SPLOS program is going to be a big help, isn't it? In, in, uh, no. into com compressing that time interval? On, Absolutely. On Absolutely, because uh, the way the program is set up now, f at least for resurfacing, uh, it's geared towards the, the larger roads, collectors, and minor arterials, whereas the uh, what we refer to as the LMIG, the Local Maintenance and Improvement Grant Program through, through the Georgia DOT, uh, the funding that we get from that uh, tends to be geared more towards residential subdivision type streets, mm -hmm. shorter length, uh, lower volume, and what have you. So uh, uh, you need to do a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, you need to do as much of both as you possibly sure. can. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so, so while this PLUS program concentrates on the corridors, uh, we're, we're getting that work done while we concentrate on the residential roads with the with the local uh, staff, uh, uh, local equipment that uh, we've done the paving ourselves, and we intend to continue to do that. I think last year, the uh, the list that was developed was perhaps a little um, ambitious in in terms of uh, the capability. I think we're building on that capability, and and so we'll be able to do. Uh, a good share of the work in-house with our own forces and that goes a long ways too because we can do the work cheaper, faster uh, than a contractor. And, we, and, and in terms of the, uh, of the timing of when you do things, we certainly can mobilize. Uh, we have the ability to adjust our schedule a lot more so than relying on a contractor. Yeah, to contractor that's come out of out of county and mm -hmm. has got jobs lined up in Fayette or mm -hmm. you know Barrow County or wherever. Uh, no question about that. But saying, having said that, one of the things that that uh, one of my goals is to build upon that capability. So uh, 
we, there's equipment that we could utilize to augment the capacity of mm -hmm. the department on it. Certainly have, uh, uh, have uh, in budget discussions uh, uh, requested uh, some of that equipment. I will, will continue to do that. Well, I think uh, we, several years ago, we uh, lease purchased a option on, on uh, some really, at the time, uh, state-of-the-art uh, paving equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, I think recently, uh, if not already, it's, you know, it's been turned back. Uh, I can sp speak for my part, and I, th and I think for the commission, we want to continue that mm -hmm. uh, process of being equipped and staffed uh, to, again, accelerate and, and compress that time interval uh, for our local roads. Uh, and then uh, the big projects that require mm -hmm. more manpower, more equipment, uh, Certainly. We, we kind of dedicate that or allocate that to, you know, the outside contractor. But uh, first off, people are they're concerned about their road out front of their house. Uh, Number one. Yeah, and and Absolutely. that's you know that's understandable. They they pay taxes and and uh, uh, I mentioned uh, in, in the introduction that uh, uh, it may still be our legal name. I, we call ourselves the Board of Commissioners, but when the county was chartered, we were the the uh, Commission of Roads and Taxes, yes. and that's pretty much uh, what mm -hmm. what it amounts to for for a lot of people. They're n not so much concerned about uh, a lot of the other things that we do, although they benefit. Certainly, uh, their uh, roads and taxes are probably a forefront of a lot of people's discussions around the coffee table. And that will continue to be uh, mm -hmm. for a long, long time. When when you think about even a brand new road, uh, an asphalt road, the the life expectancy is 20 years. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can imagine if with our repair cycle, uh, if we're going to be having to do maintenance on every single road, at least on a 20-year rotation, um, it's going to take a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to be able to get to all the roads in, in that 20-year rotation. Mm -hmm. And so, and the level of invest, investment would have to be uh, substantially higher mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know that... Uh, I'll, I'll repeat, I know the commissioners are, uh, they really want to get that new equipment and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, here in the next couple of months uh, how things go financially. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see uh, and I understand that our uh, ec local economy is recovering. It's, uh, it's not taking off like a rocket, but it's, uh, it is recovering in a very positive trend. Mm -hmm. And if that continues, we'll be able to do more and more things uh, with our roads. That's, that's certainly what I want to see. Absolutely. And I, I, know, I know you do as well. Um, we, we, um, you mentioned the uh, LMIG program, uh, and that's different than the old uh, scheme or, or program at the state. What, what, what has changed? Well, the, um, the program used to be called years ago LARP, uh, Local Area Repaving Program. And um, essentially, it was very, very similar. The funding level was a, l a little less, but that program was one where the county or municipality would submit a list to, to the Georgia DOT, and, and they would send somebody out and do the analysis and do the pavement comparison and pavement rating. And then they would select from that list uh, whatever fit their budget to do. Mm -hmm. So you could potentially have submitted a list of 50 roads, and they may have selected uh, 20. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, it, uh, theoretically, you could have submitted a prioritized list. Of, here's my my uh, number one choice at all the way to 50, and they skipped over the first 30 and picked the last 20. That, it was their shot. It, it was their, their call. Shot. And they performed the work under contract, mm -hmm. and um, so that's how that operated. Uh, so the new program, ELMI, local maintenance and improvement grant program operates a little, a little differently where we do the rating, we submit the list, but we target the list to a known funding level. Mm -hmm. The funding level is done by formula based on population and road miles. Okay. And uh, it is a, a published uh, number uh, every year based on the state funding. They they essentially let the county know this is how much you're going to be getting this year uh, or next year because you have to apply by the end of the current year for the next year yeah. funding. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you, uh, so we put together a list uh, targeting that level of investment 
and uh, we submit it to them, they review it, and if, and it doesn't have to be resurfacing. The, El, uh, the ELMIG program can be used for other things as well. It could be, could be used potentially for safety projects and the like. Uh, things like guardrail okay. and reflectors, and reflectors painting. and striping, and uh, so I'm uh, pull, potentially I'm complain about the striping. But go ahead. <laughs> okay, well, we'll talk about that as well. But uh, <laughs> but the um, uh, you know so so there's a lot of different things that you can apply for under the Elmic program. They will review and if they qualify, if the things that you submitted are legitimate uh, programs that qualify under under their guidelines, then essentially after they review it and approve it, they send the county a check for that money, uh, for that amount. You, you set it aside and when we go out and uh, either contract for the work to be done, depending on what it is, or if we do it in-house, or when we buy materials and the like, then that funding is used to cover the, the, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the expenditures. Okay, well, you, you, uh, let, me, let me talk about the striping and just kind of make a little, little complaint here. Uh, I notice when uh, new roads are paved and the markings are put down, it doesn't seem like the paint is uh, is opaque or heavy or as thick as it used to be. It seems to be thinner, and it seems to be after a couple of years and it rains, you can't even see the lines. Is there anything the county can do that, in, in contract-wise? Well, what you essentially, here, here's uh, how the process works. When a new project is done, new striping is applied, but the striping that is applied is temporary. So it's paint versus thermoplastic material. Mm -hmm. So a new road will have very dark, um, new looking asphalt, and it will have faint striping on it mm -hmm. because you cannot apply the thermoplastic until the pavement cures for a little bit perhaps a minimum of 30 days. Uh -huh. So initially it will look more faint and what have you, but after the 30 days uh, or whatever the curing period that, that you select is, you're supposed to be able to ha apply the thermoplastic, which is a much more durable. It is not as uh, transparent. It is uh, highly visible. Mm -hmm. And so if that has not been happening, it, it's, an, it's a different issue. It's not uh, uh, that the material is not durable. It, it would be that perhaps they didn't go back and apply the permanent striping mm -hmm. after doing the temporary. Well, we'll take that offline. We'll Absolutely. <laughs> you, you let me know, you let me know rep, what road, the location, we'll take a look okay. at that. Well, I don't, I don't want to end on a, on a, on a negative note. Uh, I, I just want to say that uh, I know your department is in, n newly energized. Uh, they, uh, they've always been great employees, but I, I think a big part of that is the ability to actually do some things. Mm -hmm. And I think because of the, uh, the states uh, changing their um, uh, funding scheme, if you will, and I mean mm -hmm. scheme in a positive way, uh, and then plus the SPLOS money, uh, it really gives your department something to work with. Absolutely. And, and that's, uh, um, that's really a positive thing to feel like you can you can make a difference, you know, in, in your job. So, uh, and, and that is our goal, and and uh, having the ability to really uh, do things uh, cheaper than a contract, be able to do more of it, mm -hmm. uh, that is very rewarding to to all of us. Yeah, uh, because so. we we know that uh, that the benefit to to the residents is there, and certainly a lot of the employees uh, are. Uh, local residents as well, so, sure. so they see it every day. Sure, absolutely. Well, let's wrap up on, on uh, one last question, uh, and it has really kind of do with the roadside, roadside maintenance, mm -hmm. the, the shoulders, the cutting of the grass, and you know, and, uh, and trash pickup. I know the sheriff's department uh, uh, does a lot of that, but what, what is your department's responsibility as far as that goes? Well, essentially, if it's a road that's maintained by the county, mm -hmm. then uh, that responsibility ultimately falls on, on uh, my department, mm -hmm. uh, the transportation department. So uh, we, can, we can have the work done uh, through many different means, the sheriff's department uh, assistance, uh, whether we contract with someone, uh, with a contractor to come in and do that type of uh, mm -hmm. maintenance or whether we do it ourselves by buying the equipment and having the staff 
uh, ultimately it is our responsibility because the roadside maintenance is not just a cosmetic treatment, it is actually a safety improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, the maintenance of the shoulders uh, is considered uh, and, the, and the alignment of the, uh, along with the alignment of the road and the traffic signals to be part of the integrity of the road. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have situations where uh, you may have very tall grass or weeds or a combination of both, um, it may seem like that is strictly a, um, you know, a cosmetic aesthetic issue. Uh, but in fact, if somebody traveling down the road uh, and, and having an issue and having to veer off the road would not know whether they're able to pull onto a level surface that they can still maneuver their car mm -hmm. into or uh, perhaps going into a ditch because the, the weeds are tall and, and mm -hmm. they can't gauge where they're pulling off to. So, so it is a, a safety consideration that we take very seriously and, and it requires really as much uh, effort uh, uh, as striping and resurfacing and everything mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest uh, certainly that safety is a priority, uh, but it's an economic development issue too. Uh, you have uh, potential home buyers or, or potential uh, business locators coming to, come to the county. They want to see a county that's uh, clean and picked up and has good roads. So, uh, and that's part of, the, part of their picture. So. Uh, there, there's no question about that. Yeah. Uh, the aesthetic component can't be minimized, but, but um, uh, in fact, we, we very often enough get calls from residents who, who want uh, to have the road paved and uh, when, when we program it, find out that there's a for sale sign out there. So there, there's definitely a correlation, at least in the perception, if nothing else, mm -hmm. that uh, good roads uh, uh, mean that you're in a good neighborhood and, and yep. that the values uh, are higher. Than yeah, good others. good community. That's that's what we want to see. Mm -hmm. Well, let's wrap it up. Uh, do you, uh, Miguel? Do you have any uh, uh, anything you'd like to remark on that I haven't touched on or? Well, no, a not message. Uh, other uh, other uh, specifically about projects and and all like that. Again, I will be continually trying to highlight the fact that that um, roads road infrastructure is an investment, not just a maintenance function of, of the county. And um, I am thrilled to be here uh, and I am very thankful for the support that I've received from the commission. Uh, because again, when our goal is to be able to serve the community and, and to actually deliver something tangible that, that uh, we can all be proud of. Mm -hmm. And uh, so whether it be uh, materials, uh, equipment, or personnel, um, hopefully we're, we're able to converge on, on a good uh, solution going forward right. so that, uh, so that uh, we can be uh, all proud of the work that right. we do. Right. Well, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I think you can see that Director Valentin has come equipped with the full set of tools to keep our roads managed to a very high level. It is a rightful expectation of our citizens that their roads be well maintained, and the commissioners know this. At the same time, priorities have to be set, and sometimes that means your friend's road gets paved before yours. But be patient, there is a plan for the many miles of roads in Douglas County. I want to thank Miguel for being with us today. I know that he has helped educate us all about the many aspects of transportation that are perhaps not as visible as the pavement. If you ever have a street or road question, don't hesitate to call or email me. I'm 3rd District Commissioner Mike Mulcair, and thank you for joining us for this District Dialogue on DCTV 23.